Is the RTX 5070 Ti the ultimate 1440p graphics card? Well, we're going to answer that question today with some 1440p and 4K benchmarks, but full disclosure, MSI is sponsoring this video and money is changing hands, so it's not a review, I just wanted to see what the 5070 Ti can do when it isn't being held back by a processor. I personally think the 5070 Ti is one of the most intriguing RTX 50 series graphics cards, mainly because it's got 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it's got tons of memory bandwidth, and it's also got the same GPU die as its bigger brother, the RTX 5080. And most of all, you can find it at MSRP pricing here in the UK, which is always a bit of a win, especially in these times. Anyways, we previously tested it with the Ryzen 9 7900X, and we found out, at least with the memory configuration, it was holding it back, especially at 1440p. So that's mainly why we've tested it with the 13700K today, because it's a more gaming oriented build with 32 gigs of high speed Hynix ADI memory. And of course, this will allow us to find out whether it's the 1440p king or not. And speaking of which, we've tested it at both Quad HD and 4K. And we've also thrown in some ray tracing and path tracing results, which are admittedly using quality DLSS upscaling. As for the RTX 5070 Ti, it's been left at its stock out of the box settings and it's running at Gen 5 speeds with resizable bar enabled. And we've tested using driver 576.52. Yeah, I had to look over to my scripts because I couldn't remember it. Anyways, let's get straight into it. I never realized Oblivion Remastered is this hard to run because at both 1440p and 4K at the ultra preset, we're not touching 60 FPS, no. This is an Unreal Engine 5 game and yeah, you kind of know where I'm going with this. So it's not exactly the most optimized of titles. However, I know for a fact if you go down to the high preset, you get way more performance than 55 FPS at 1440p and around 30 for 4K. Sucker 2 is another game that uses Unreal Engine 5 and to be fair, it runs quite a bit better than Oblivion Remastered because at 1440p we're seeing more than 60 FPS on average but the 1% low is suffering which is a bit of a trend with this game. However 4K is looking pretty okay, it's 42 FPS so it's not particularly smooth but we've always got DLSS and you could always go down to the high preset and that would work perfectly fine on a 5070 Ti. We're moving away from the Unreal Engine with Cyberpunk 2077 and man this game is really optimised as it scales quite well with resolution. We can see this because at 1440p we're getting just below 120fps on average and the 1% low is looking okay. But 4K is below 60fps but with some tweaking we can easily get this above 60 if you enable DLSS on the Transformer model. It will look absolutely brilliant at 4K. Or we could tweak some settings. Either way, I'm pretty confident we could get this above 60 frames. No such tweaking is required in God of War Ragnarok because at both resolutions, man, you're going to be getting a ton of performance, more to the point where your CPU is going to be more of a deciding factor. Because at 1440p, you're going to saturate a 144Hz monitor here, and the 1% low is also looking pretty great too. And at 4K, I reckon you'll have an absolutely phenomenal experience playing this game with the 5070 Ti as the performance is really good, just shy of 100 frames per second. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is extremely optimized and we can see that today as the average frame rates are looking absolutely brilliant. At 1440p, you're good enough for just shy of 120 FPS, which is fantastic news. And when you switch up to 4K, you're getting above 60 frames still, which is absolutely brilliant. So if you really didn't want to use upscaling in any form, you could just not enable it and you're still getting a decent frame time as well. So absolute W from Warhorse here. This is a rare case of Star Wars Jedi Survivor running pretty decently because at 1440p, we're getting in the triple digits for the average frame rate, which is somewhat unheard of here on this channel, but the 1% lows, in typical fashion for this game aren't particularly brilliant. However, when we switch up to 4K, the 1% lows sort themselves out as it's only trailing the average frame rate by just 10 FPS. And with native 4K on the Epic preset, you can't really complain too much as this performance is relatively, well, I don't mean relatively, it's quite good, let's be honest. So the 5070 Ti gets on pretty decently here. And as always, you've got DLSS in this game, so you could enable that if you fancy some more frames. 
So as a whole, rasterized 1440p gaming with ultra settings really isn't that much of a challenge for this graphics card because you're going to be easily getting 60 FPS and if not, you're going to be getting way into the 100s, which is absolutely brilliant. However, there is one outlier and that is Oblivion Remastered. For some reason, it's just really hard to run on the ultra preset because the 5070 Ti did all right on the high preset when we tested it a while ago. Anyways, what I'll do here is just enable DLSS or lower it down to the high preset and call it a day. Anyways, this trend continues at 4K as it's uh, really hard to run at rasterized native 4K. It's, it's quite hard. Anyways, for the most part, some games will require some tweaking to get above 60 FPS at native 4K. But yet again, you've got DLSS upscaling, which works absolutely phenomenally, especially at this higher resolution. And to be honest, settings tweaking in most of these games will allow them to push beyond 60 FPS. So if you want to avoid upscaling, that's also an option for you as well. Now, when we enable ray tracing, we see pretty decent performance. And in fact, in Oblivion Remastered, we see more performance than with it disabled. This is because we're using quality upscaling here and it seems to work quite well in Oblivion Remastered. So if you really needed some frames, I'd recommend just enabling DLSS here. Anyways, ray tracing looks okay in this game. It's nothing to write home about, at least from the environment we were testing in. But yeah, it doesn't really seem to hit the frame rate all too much as long as you use upscaling. I somewhat think ray tracing might be a bit broken in Jedi Survivor or it might be a similar story to Oblivion Remastered with upscaling just boosting the frame rate more than what ray tracing would take away from it, if that makes sense. Because at 1440p we're getting around 84 FPS which is admittedly lower than the rasterization result. But the interesting one is 4K because we're getting around 20 more frames on average but the 1% low barely budges compared to raster. So I'm really not too sure what this is down to. It, I ran the test again and this is what kept coming up. So I'm really not sure as to what's going on here. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of at a loss for this one. As always, ray tracing in Cyberpunk 2077 looks absolutely phenomenal. And to be honest, it doesn't really take too much out of the performance, especially here at 1440p on the RT Ultra preset. You're still getting more than 90 FPS on average with a 1% low. That's still looking very good. This is how I'd personally play the game. It looks absolutely brilliant here. And 4K is, yeah, you're, you're dropping below 60 FPS on average with a 1% low. That's only trailing that by nine. But to be honest, it's really not too bad. Yeah, you'd probably be after a bit more performance and this is where some settings tweaking can come in and you'll be able to get above that 60 FPS threshold. And we've got Indiana Jones on the very ultra preset, not ultra, very ultra. Anyways, we're getting very ultra performance. We have around 134 on average at 1440p. That's really good. And the 1% low is also looking brilliant too. And then at 4K, we miss out on 100 FPS by just one frame per second. So that's great there. And the frame time is also very smooth here as well. So absolutely zero problems here. At 1440p, ray tracing is easily doable as long as you use some quality upscaling, and to be honest, in some of these games, you probably don't even need it. The only game to get below 60 FPS was Oblivion Remastered, and to be honest, I was kind of expecting this, especially as what we saw from the rasterization result. However, you could just tweak some of the settings and you'd easily get above 60 FPS anyways. But as a whole, I'd probably just avoid 4K ray tracing on the 5070 Ti. It's doable in some games, like Indiana Jones, where it gets on quite well, for truth be known, but that game forces ray tracing you don't really have a say in the matter but with titles like cyberpunk not performing that brilliantly i'd probably just give it a miss for the most part enabling full ray tracing or path tracing depending on what you want to call it is kind of doable in cyberpunk 2077 i'd like to say because we're still getting above 60 fps on average which is Kind of amazing if you ask me. And the 1% lows are also looking pretty decent, but when we go up to 4K, this is where it starts to struggle quite a bit because we're just getting above 30 FPS on average. And the 1% low is looking all right, I suppose, but I'd probably just recommend staying away from path tracing at 4K. The 5070 Ti can do it, but it can't really do it that well. 
1440p in Indiana Jones with medium path tracing enabled provides a very playable experience at 60 FPS with a 1% low of 52 so the frame time is looking pretty good here and at 4K I can't really say the same because we're below 30 FPS and the VRAM was starting to become a problem at the higher resolution so I'd probably recommend against path tracing entirely in Indiana Jones just so you can get a much smoother frame rate with the regular ray tracing. So path tracing is certainly doable on a 5070 Ti just about with upscaling at 1440p because we saw 62 FPS for Cyberpunk and 60 for Indiana Jones. And the frame times were still looking pretty good so you can't really complain too much especially as I still believe path tracing is a bit of an experimental feature and we can tell that from the 4K performance because it's not great. Especially in Indiana Jones the performance was really bad and we were starting to saturate the full 16 gigabytes of VRAM on this graphics card so I'd definitely avoid that there and Cyberpunk. It is somewhat playable, it's like Xbox One levels of performance but the game literally looks like a thousand times better so yeah there is that. So yeah I think it's fair to say that the RTX 5070 Ti is one of the ultimate 1440p gaming graphics cards because as a whole at Quad HD it performed perfectly fine even if you were to enable path tracing which it's not something I was expecting getting into today's video. And at this resolution, you won't be running into any VRAM related problems. Well, I should hope not. 16 gigabytes of VRAM is more than what most people have. So it'd be kind of concerning if you were running into some frame buffer issues. And uh, that can't be said for 4K. Here we started to run into some frame buffer related problems with Indiana Jones in particular. And when we take a look at the rest of the 4K gaming performance, as a whole, I'd say it was pretty hit and miss, but the saving grace is you could do some tweaking to basically most of these games to get them playable, but in the case of the path tracing ones, I'm not sure what you could do, or you can't really perform miracles there. And like I've said a couple of times in this video, probably a bit more than a couple, but quality upscaling works absolutely perfectly at higher resolutions like 4K, so you won't be running into any problems there, and it's kind of like free performance in a way. So the RTX 5070 Ti is an absolutely brilliant graphics card. Is it a cheap one? Certainly not by any means, but it's one of the few models which you can find in stock at its MSRP pricing here in the UK at least. So if you want to check out MSI's range of RTX 5070 Ti's, there will be links in the description down below. And with that being said, if you wanted to see how we upgraded our PC to one of these, you can check it out in a video up here. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one. Also a big thank you to MSI for sponsoring this video.